Good morning and happy Sabbath and hello guys. How y'all doing? Good morning, Brian. Wonderful, wonderful. Good morning. We got Phil coming to us from one of the beaches in Southern California. Good place to be. And Dan, you're coming to us, I think, from the great city of Fort Worth, Texas. And That's I'm correct. And I'm up here in Bakersfield. So thank you guys for joining us. And let's let's get going. Let's uh, we got a lot to cover today. So um, always look into the cross. All let's you can never forget if you're if you got troubles, if you got whatever's going on. I think looking to Jesus, looking to the cross is the answer. So, um, Phil, would you please open with a prayer? Okay. Dear Lord, thank you for a chance again to have a Sabbath time off and to meet together with believers as brothers and sisters. And I'm thankful for this time with Dan and Brian to talk about you and I want to emphasize what Brian just said about let's try to emphasize looking at Jesus and the cross and what he's done. Maybe not looking so much at what we're doing and uh, remembering what Paul learned in his life of ministry that if you preach the cross, you're on the right track. So be with us. I ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us as we speak and with each member of our church as we worship this weekend on sabbath and we thank you for jesus and ask these things in his name amen amen thank you phil all right guys you just chime in you know i do a little pre pre thing before the lesson so anything you'd like to say and comment just jump in there so mike dang if you're out there watching you know what these are these are little persimmons growing in it's so beautiful. I uh, love springtime. Love to see everything growing. And uh, have about 10 or 12 passion fruit blossoms on my vine. And that is just an amazing blossom. I love it. Hopefully we get some fruit this year. And guys, I talked to you about this uh, men's seminar I went to last week. Um, and one of the guys talking there, Daryl Strawberry, you know him, uh, major league baseball player really messed up, uh, in and out of jail, uh, drugs, alcohol abuse, everything. And uh, I went and saw him and he's just such a cool guy. And he's turned it over and turned it all over to Jesus. And great book there, Turning Your Season Around. I'm reading that now and there's just a lot of great stuff in there. Um, but they also have this guy there talking Michael Franzis big time gangster in New York uh, huge Dan you saw this uh, uh, he's got a lot of presence on YouTube if you look him up and I tried to find a good video to recommend it this is the one his testimony done there at not Avenue Church it's from eight years ago so there's some updates but Dan what do you think of Michael here I, I was just impressed overall with his um, with his conversion and uh, his struggles his um, um, he, he he it was just a, a an incredible story you know and um, something that um, could could easily be turned into a, a motion picture yes. <laughs> And I wonder if it has been, I mean, because he talks about different movies and gangster things. And I think his life, I think there was a, a recent miniseries or something where, I don't know if it focused on his life, but his, he was in it, his character. So, um, Phil, you know anything about this guy? No, I've, I've only heard about him <laughs> just this week through you and I didn't click on the uh, link you sent yet. I, I haven't heard his testimony, but I'm going to trust uh, you and Dan to have a good evaluation of that. I, I like these New York guys and uh, it makes me start talking like this guy. I got this guy here, you know, <laughs> and uh, 
a uh, couple things. He 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 has some very powerful pres- lines that he says. One, he's he lived over twenty years in violation of God's law, man's law, and uh, he just turned back from that life altogether. And having done so much sin every day, he was in violation of God's law and man's law. And he said, "And if you think you can't be saved, and you've missed the whole gospel, you've missed the whole." awesome uh magnificent sacrifice that jesus did on the cross so you know don't use that as something uh, don't let satan pull that over you jesus made the sacrifice and uh if anyone does go to look at this particular video because it is from eight years ago his dad sonny franzies did go to back to prison at the age of 95 expect it for a five-year sentence so they never expected him to live but he did live he got out of prison at a hundred and passed away i think last year at the age 103 so the oldest living gangster there anyway just a wonderful testimony from this guy trivia you guys can think about this for a minute how did 10th avenue north get its name the christian band 10th avenue north Dan, I have a retraction, a correction to make from last week. We were talking and I talked about this, this song that's very, it was very encouraging to me. It's called New Today. And this is God's blessings from the Bible verse. God's blessings are new today. And I said it was by somebody else, but it's really Michael Tyler, which is, uh, or Micah, Micah Tyler, which is embarrassing because you can see Micah Tyler is going to be with Mercy Me uh, this fall playing on my birthday in the town i was born that's so cool anyway there you go 10th avenue north got its name from an east west road in palm beach county there in florida and here's a couple quick things before we get into our study if you want to watch a beautiful video uh this song revival god of revival and i think a lot of us have been talking about revival and god's spirit moving and uh Beautiful, beautiful. Our lesson today is When We Fall Apart. This song by Ryan Stevenson is about when his mother uh, can, had uh, was diagnosed with cancer and then died. And when I saw him in, in concert, he talked about the song. And I can't honestly, I don't know how he can play it and sing it and not just break down. It's uh, But a beautiful video and stuff, pictures of her and everything. And And that got me thinking when we fall apart. So we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Our Bible walk. This verse from Proverbs is one of the first verses that that guy, Michael Franzies, came across in prison that just stopped him cold because he goes, he goes, hey, God, I got nothing but enemies. I don't want you to be my enemy, too. So uh, that was pretty cool. Okay, there's some beautiful artwork there. You can look that up. All right, guys, let's get right into our study when we fall apart. And today's um, devotional, Pastor Eddie put out, he's talking about Jesus is talking to the people. And uh, they're in Matthew 9. And the, all they've had is the teaching of the Pharisees. So they've come to the conclusion that they don't measure up to God's demands. So they've given up. That's such a disheartening phrase. They've given up. And, you know, no matter how we fall apart, the how, the why, the whatever. If you you believe in God, but then you've given up, how hopeless is that? So that's what we're going to kind of talk about. And Dan and Phil, I'm going to open up. I'm going to let you guys just jump in and kind of say what's on your heart. Well, as, um, as Christians, we, we will struggle from time to time. Um, we're, we're faced with diseases, um, lost loved ones, um, hardships, unemployment, loss of fame and fortune, 
um, these these things all happen. They have, they happen to um, um, sinners also, um, or or non-believers. But um, um, even though we're saved, we will still experience all these same tr- struggles throughout. And so it it becomes a matter of how do we handle, how do we cope with these struggles and move forward. Phil, how do we handle and cope with the struggles? Yeah, I was thinking about when you brought up this topic, I think I mentioned to you this week when we got to talk a little earlier this week about a sermon that Pastor Vinden gave at our church. He's the author of the book, To Know God, that we went over a couple months ago. And he talked about the house built on the rock and the house built on the sand. And he talked about how every one of us, like Dan was just saying, we're going to have this big storm that's going to hit us and disrupt us and show us the brokenness that we had all along that we didn't realize. And his point in that sermon was the way you recover is you establish this foundation to begin with before the storm hits. You mm-hmm. build your life on the rock, the house built on the rock versus the house built on the sand. So he saw that as, as being vital to have something to fall back on. But I don't know how the testimony of, of this fellow you heard fits with that. I don't know if he had a foundation from his family upbringing or I, I'd like to hear, hear what you can say about that after you listen to his testimony. Yeah, he was, uh, you know, he was a good Italian guy from a good Italian family, very strong Catholics. But like he says, they never read the Bible. They didn't know who Jesus was. I mean, they knew he was God, but they studied the catechism. So it's very much like a, uh, he says it's like a subject in school studying God. Uh, But, and here's the key, he just nailed it. He goes, But it's not a subject in school. It is a relationship with God. He goes, and he built a relationship. And I think what you just said about building the foundation, what Dan's talking about, it all comes back to, do I really know God? Do I have a relationship with him? Because things will fall apart. Jesus said that things are, um, what do you say in Matthew 6, 33? He said something, he said something like, you will have hard times in this world, but have, take heart. I've overcome the world. He's already done it. We just got to trust him and hang on to him. Um, Brian, your question was good. You know, how do we get out of the pit? Like this guy that gave the uh, testimony, he came out of the pit of prison, I suppose. And um, I think the first step is realizing we're in the pit before you can realize that you have need for god you have to be able to look at yourself clearly for once in your life and say man i'm in trouble here and we have to come to this realization of our brokenness of our desperate need for god and for jesus so that's i think step one dan jump in there what you think um well you're spot on in um in in your reference to um keeping focused in our eyes upon jesus as as he has uh overcome uh men sin and death and um and so from the uh, book of hebrews um hebrews 12 3 um, it says, consider him, um, referring to Jesus, who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And, uh, and it's true. Um, Jesus is the only one who has um, uh, overcome the uh, sin and death. And um, at, at one point, uh, we read in Matthew 
I'm sorry, John chapter six, um, where the people wanted to make Jesus a king. But when he started teaching about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, um, many people left um, and, and departed from his following. Um, and, and then Jesus turns to the 12 and says, what about you? And, um, and for, for a while they stuck with him, but as we know at the, at the time of the crucifixion, even the 12 left and Jesus was all by himself. And, um, and so, uh, but thankfully he has overcome, um, all that man has, uh, to offer, um, He's overcome sin. He's overcome death. And so if we keep focused on Jesus, um, as Paul says, we can actually delight, have a delight in our struggle. And, um, and so that's the difference between us uh, who are believers and non-believers is that we do have the hope um, to, to work through it and eventually um, be at home with him in heaven. Interesting. Um, um, hope, I, you know, the text from today in Matthew that Pastor Eddie referenced the, the harvest, he said, the harvest is plentiful, but the harvesters are few. And, uh, you know, he's talking about people that maybe aren't believers don't have a close relationship with God, but they have this longing for something. They long for peace. They long for God, but there's so few genuine harvesters going out there and sharing the true love of God. And, uh, uh, yeah, when we hit bottom as a Christian, we've got that foundation no matter what happens, it may be rough. It'll, you know, heartbreaking, but we have hope. And um, it's like when he's talking about you don't grieve as others that Paul wrote to the Thessalonians. We don't grieve as those people that don't have hope. We do have hope. And that's our whole purpose is to share that hope. And uh, so when you're at rock bottom, um, I mentioned when we talked earlier, there's no verses to help you feel better and stay at rock bottom no that's that's kind of ridiculous instantly look up to god and here i love this verse this is my birthday verse you know 10 23 there in hebrews um, <laughs> um, hold tightly to the hope we have for god can be trusted to keep his promise that's uh, that's amazing and um hey brian go ahead phil i remember something about your birthday that one time we got to do a little miniature hike on the top of a high mountain and it showed the elevation of the mountain and it was wow. 10 23 you remember that mountain <laughs> yeah it was on maui <laughs> yes haleakala it's your birthday haleakala. mountain yeah i think i got that picture here somewhere let me post it real quick <laughs> Yeah, that was funny. Um, but, you know, when you're at bottom and you're looking up, here's one, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. And just picture, I love this picture, you know, I can see being out there sitting on a dock, hearing the crickets and the birds or something, the sun's going down, the peace, the stillness. And that's what God's done to me a few times this week. He keeps saying, be still, just stop, be still and know that I am God. And uh, man, there's so much. Brian, I just uh, thought about how we realize, you know, where we are in life and how we get out of that pit. And I've been thinking about Peter since you told us the topic this week. And we all know that, you know, he hit rock bottom that night when Jesus was in Gethsemane and was arrested and he's, he's there in the courtyard and Peter denies him three times as Jesus had prophesied he would. 
and we know how he got reinstated by the Sea of Galilee when they're fishing and Jesus is on the shore cooking breakfast for them. And in a way, I just thought of this, is it a gift of God to bring us to that point where we realize our brokenness? Because Peter was so full of himself just by his natural being. that I don't know if he would have ever gone to the point of accepting God's help if he hadn't done what Jesus said he was going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think you're right. That's a very interesting. You know, it's a gift to finally realize you are not self-sufficient. I think that's hard for us to view tough time suffering as a gift. But I like what Paul says in Romans 8. He says, I consider that our current sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. I, I've never really thought of this before, but maybe it's a gift that God has to give us to some degree. All our lives are different. He knows exactly how to reach all of us. He, he has dramatic ways of reaching us like the life of Paul and humiliating ways of reaching us like what happened to Peter. Mm -hmm. I just think he knows what it takes to save each one of us. And like Dan points out from Zephaniah, God is mighty to save. And he doesn't leave any stone unturned to, to reach each one of us, I think. I like that. If you're at bottom and, and you're in sin, the weight of sin is just pounding you down and keeping you from moving here's a wonderful verse from psalms blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and sin is covered god can do that like michael franzi said if, if you think your sin is too much and that you're too hopeless and god can't do anything then you've actually missed the whole bible you know the whole gospel that's what jesus did and there's the verse you just mentioned, Phil, from Zephaniah. Beautiful. Another verse that pertains to this is one you and I talked about earlier this week, Brian. It's Romans 3.23. Yeah. And both of us memorized the first half of this verse when we were kids in grade school, but the teachers didn't think we could memorize the whole thing, and they left out the second half. In Romans 3.23 says, you'll all remember this. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God uh -huh. and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. Yes. I like the, the way the Message Bible says that. He got us out of the mess we're in and restored us to where he always wanted us to be. That is awesome. We keep making messes, and he's done all this to get us out of the mess. He wants us there with him. That is awesome. Love that. So this really points to what, uh, what the lesson we'll talk about next week is help is on the way. Where do we get our help from? And here's a little... A little hint from Psalms 141. I lift my eyes into the hills from whence my help, my help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. And we start and we're going to be ending looking at the thinking of the cross and what Jesus did. Because when we are powerless, we're, we're not sufficient to do anything good including saving ourselves. God died for us. Christ died for us. And the cool thing is he's coming soon. He wants us to be with him. I think he wants that uh, very badly and can't wait to come and show us everything he's done and prepared for us. That'll be so cool. Oh, so let's see. Um, we're going to, it's time for our closing prayer. Who did I ask to do this? I can't remember that. Uh, I got it. You got it. Okay. <laughs> I have short attention 
deficit here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, right. Before we before we pray, Dan, any last thoughts, Dan and Phil? Um, um, from Second uh, Corinthians. Let's see. Second Corinthians twelve ten. Paul is talking about. Um, his struggles and his weakness, you know, and he says, uh, this is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And of course, that is the strength that is given um, through Jesus Christ. Um, and at that point, he is at rock bottom. And, yep. um, and so we must rely on Jesus to keep us going. And you know, you know something, each one of us has a story. Daryl Strawberry shared his, uh, Michael Franzis, every single person, you, I feel everybody has a story of where we, yes. how we struggled in life and what we did with Jesus. Did we go to him for help? Did we reject him and think it wouldn't work? Um, did we think it was hopeless and just give up? I hope not. I hope we all, um, and God's big enough to take any questions we've got, any, um, any anger we've got. He's big enough to take all of that. And if we'll just come to him honestly, and um, honestly, we all um, are a broken people. And without, without Christ, we just don't have a chance so phil last thoughts yeah my last thought i just have this mental image of paul and he's in jail he's in the pit actually it says he's in the deepest darkest part of that jail and philippi with silas and like we were saying earlier paul was one of the few people i know of that just embraced this idea of suffering for the sake of jesus mm -hmm. he's, he was just like bring it on you know i, I love this and he finds this joy in suffering for Jesus and they start singing and we all know what happened as a result of that. So I don't think many of us understand that idea to rejoice, you know, in all things and, and trust that God is going to do some good out of it. Amen. Amen. Beautiful thought. Rejoice in all things. Yep. Well, thanks, guys. Dan, I'll turn it over to you now. If you would close with prayer for us, please. I will. Dearest O God, we thank you again for another opportunity to study your word. With um, we, we hope that our worship is pleasing to you, Lord. And we pray for um, the strength to face our struggles and that we may remain focused on Jesus as we encounter hardships and and um, unpleasantness in, in our lives. We pray that um, we would have the faith to delight in our struggles and uh, and always remain focused on Jesus. This Amen. is our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Guys, always, God bless you. Thanks for stopping in and straightening me out where I'm not able to figure stuff out. And uh, so bye, everybody. We'll see you next week. Keep studying. Keep the faith.